Now it's already early September and a lot of people are wondering how late can you plant a food plot? And it might be that you're just clearing out a plot right now. It might be that you have a food plot failure, but it's probably a lot later than you think. And I'll give you an example, the UP of Michigan, Northern setting, of course, they'd be similar to Northern Wisconsin, Northern Minnesota, North Dakota, upstate New York, over into Vermont, New Hampshire, those areas where you're starting to get your first frost in September at some point, early September, mid-September. I had a food plot up there. It was the last weekend of October and I planted it at that time. October 1st was just that Tuesday, Wednesday. It was that weekend before. I had a new food plot, put a bunch of lime down. I'm sure at least two tons on that food plot per acre. Uh, very terrible soil. And I threw a lot of rye out. And I wasn't expecting much, but I just had it cleared. I was anxious to get out there. And, uh, and unfortunately, it seemed like on October 1st, we had a huge snowstorm, enough that it pushed some geese down on the food plot that liked picking up that rye through the snow. So we had that snow sitting on that rye, didn't look very promising. Now over the next week, we always get measurable snow in the UP of Michigan during October, especially early October, but it doesn't persist. And so by the time we got four or five days later, it was already 60, 70 degrees, sunny, the snow was gone and the melting snow and the moisture created by the moist, uh, melting snow and germinated the rye. I ended up having a great crop of rye and I noticed it wasn't coming in very high. So then mid-October, 10th of October, I added more rye. I'm sure I had three, three to 100 to 400 pounds of winter rye per acre right on the plot. And when you're pushing the envelope like that in a northern setting, you have to use something like rye. You can only use rye because oats are killed by frost. It's one thing if they're already established, they can take a few frosts before they actually turn brown, oats. But wheat or rye will stay green all the way through winter and into the springtime. So when you're pushing the envelope like that, you have to use rye, especially in those northern settings where you're gonna have that persistent frost freeze. You know, if you get a frost in September, in Kentucky, that's not very common. So when you get down to a Kentucky line, whether it's Kentucky, West Virginia, over to Oklahoma, Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, over even into Southern Pennsylvania, into Virginia, Louisiana, when you get into areas like that, Tennessee, then you, you can really push the envelope on planting. And when you're thinking about October 1st is really pushing it in the UP and Michigan, those Northern settings, I've seen people plant good cereal rye, wheat plantings in mid-October and even later and still have a great food plot even in the third week of October. So you have a lot of time when you get into those locations and you also have more options because you're not getting those consistent frosts and freezes the further south you go then you can actually plant oats and oats are fairly desirable and sometimes people like to plant cold hardy oats and in those southern areas what's interesting those cold hardy oats might stay green all winter. In the UP of Michigan, they're brown by middle of November. It doesn't matter if they're cold hardy or not, I've used both. So they're brown already, and that's why I stopped using oats long ago, because in these northern areas, I want that cereal grain to stay green all winter long. The value of that green food source in spring uh, cannot be underestimated. It's really high, it's a good value. So I'm looking at oats are great, in those southern areas, they'll stay green. It's almost like they're a little bit wider blade. It seems like deer like them a little bit more. So oats a little bit further south, rye the further north you go, and of course wheat. You know, if there's first time plots and you you're, have a plot failure, you have poor soil, then rye is always, always the way to go. But if you have good soil and you can't get a hold of rye, don't be afraid to use wheat. Wheat just has a little bit less oomph to it. Think about it, the next year wheat might grow three, four feet high, rye is growing five to six feet high. So rye has a greater ability, rye germinates down, they've done studies at Michigan State University where rye is germinated down to 37 degrees soil temperature. So it, grow, it germinates very low temperatures and if you get a warm up of 50, 60 degrees, then it'll green right up and you'll have a great crop. That's why I like planting a lot of rye later and that should be another point here is that when i'm looking at pushing the envelope you're not looking at ag practices where you're getting a seed head and you're actually harvesting you're trying to fill space you want to look at that soil and that's why i added rye in the past when i had that snow germination because it was coming in but very light you read traditional ag practices about 100 pounds per acre and that's just way too light for those late season plantings because you want to fill space horizontally instead of one sprig of rye 
every three or four inches, two inches, you want them every half inch, inch, inch and a half. You want to pack it in there so you have a lot of young tender stems. They're not going to get that growth. You don't care about harvesting or seed growth, seed head growth in the future. So you're not looking at, it's kind of like corn. Obviously, if you're going to harvest corn, you can't put three times as much seed because it's like stunning bluegills in a pond. It's the same with brassica. You're not gonna have any volume then. You're not going to have a crop, an appreciable crop. You're not gonna have volume. You actually get more volume in those cases by planting less. When it comes to a late season planting and you're pushing the envelope, you wanna plant more. So you're look, talking, if it's late and you're really on that last planting date, you're looking at 300 pounds per acre of rye or wheat. And if it warms up in two weeks and it looks like you can fill some space, and there's gonna be another warm up for a week or two and some moisture, might want to add another couple hundred pounds at that time too. I think in Coon Valley last year, because we had drought and we had a brassica failure, I probably put 400 pounds plus per acre on those plots. And that was really the way to go to have that lush green carpet. Now, something that really helps is like in the UP of Michigan, we didn't have plot start where a two and a half gallon jug of plot start is equal to one ton of line as far as what it does to the soil to allow the plants to uptake the nutrients and transfer into good growth. It's not correcting the pH, but what it is doing is it's acting like lime, so it changes the soil composition so that it can uptake the nutrients and transfer to the plants. That's what Plot Start does. Pretty easy just to go out and spray two and a half gallon jugs per acre on your plot at planting time and get a quick start for that crop. Also lime I found on light soils, I'd put out two to four tons of lime per acre in the UP at one time. And it does react enough to actually change the soil, even in high fours, low fives, to actually get some appreciable growth going into that late planting. Very important. I've done that too, where I haven't used lime or plot start. And I had little green reddish stems that came up of rye. They turned yellow and died. And it's because the pH wasn't there. And again, that was way before plot start too. So always think about amending the soil as fast as you can at that time and, uh, and using the appropriate seed for the timing for where you're at too. And then finally, a clover base. Even though it's late, you're getting clover on there. You just want it to be on the soil and ready for the spring to take off. And if you do happen to get a little bit of growth in the fall still, it doesn't matter if that clover is only two inches high, an inch high. You're not looking for the clover to add value. You're using it as a base. You're using the correct cool season annual like rye, wheat, or even oats in some cases. The next year with the rye or wheat, you can mow it off to allow the clover to come in. You can frost seed clover in the spring to thicken the stand if it looks like it needs it. Or you can kill it with a grass specific herbicide and then that will leave the clover base left over. So there's a lot of time to accomplish some goals including that perennial base of clover and chicory going into the next season. But you want to make sure that you add the appropriate cool season annual like rye if it's in those poor soil conditions wheat maybe if it's good soils good ph and then certainly oats the further south you go oats and clover always a great combination because you don't have to kill those oats or mow them in the spring so how late is too late to plant a food plot in your area you still have plenty of time it's early september you can plant all the way up till October, even in the most northern settings, and then really can push that all the way to November in a lot of the southerly locations where whitetail and whitetail habitat mix and combine to great hunting. Never take a dirt field into hunting season. There's really no reason. There's a lot of things you can do right now to make sure that you plant that new food plot, that you plant that plot that you just got rid of the weeds in, that you had a crop failure in, whatever the reason, there's still time this year and make sure you take advantage of a late season planting this season if you need to, if you have the soil that's open and you have the ability to do so because you, your deer herd and your hunt will be better off for it this fall. Well, I'm real excited folks. I appreciate you watching this video, but my next web class, how to plant food plots, how to design your food plot program is out. And uh, it really goes through a step-by-step -step process for not only how to plant your food plots, but why you should plant them, where you should plant them, what you should plant, how you should create them. There's a lot of different modules. Ends up about 30 videos all together. I urge you to check that out. We're out here completing our food plot work today and we do that in a pretty strict pattern so we can find success this fall. Food plots shouldn't be a guessing game. Take the guesswork out of food plots and food plots planting and, uh, and check out the web classes. I have my how to design, 
your whitetail property, the food plots for the next web class in the series. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope you check it out. And uh, let me know what you think if you uh, end up purchasing that. And I think you'd be well pleased that you did.